On one accord, for their reward, they tarried for the Spirit. Both night and day they stayed and prayed in order to inherit. At last he came in Jesus' name, in a Pentecostal shower. He brought a tongue to everyone who tarried for the power. It was the Pentecost experience sent down for you and me. Sent down in love from God above to set all people free. The sound was loud to that great crowd, for heaven had transmitted the risen Christ from paradise on them while they were sitting. This got around and they were found by Jews from every nation. They all turned out to see them shout with the vain imagination. But it was the Sit down in love from God above to set all people free. The Pentecost experience sent down for you and me. Sit down in love from God above to set all people free. Hello friends and welcome again to the Pentecost experience. I'm your host John Clark, here with my brother Mike. Mike, glad to have you here with us this week. Good to be here. We're in the home of uh, Brother Joe Murray, and we want to hear his wife's testimony, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. I was reading these scriptures right here a minute ago. I know you've heard them before, haven't you? Mm -hmm. If God be for us, who can be against us? If he's for us, that's just about all we need. <laughs> Let me keep reading here. Listen to these wonderful scriptures. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? None of those things will ever separate us from the love of God that's in Christ. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I wrote a song one time titled, I'm in Love. But it has a little twist to it I want to explain to you before I sing it. All right, Mike, I'm going to use you. Since uh, you're here, I might as well use you, right? All right. I'm going to ask you this question. If I'm holding, let's say, a garden hose and spraying water out of it, and I point it at you and spray you, which one of us is in the water? I would be first. <laughs> yeah, before you got the hose and sprayed That's me. That's right. <laughs> uh, you would be in the water. That's right. Because the water would be getting on you. Well, mm -hmm. people have a way of saying <laughs> I'm in love and they mean that I am loving somebody else mm -hmm. but we ought to turn that around and say I'm in love because somebody's loving me and so the, I wrote Man. this song titled I'm in love meaning of course uh, not emphasizing my love to God but his love to me I'm in his love he's like spraying me with it Amen. covering me with it let's sing that song right okay I'm in the presence of glory divine. I'm in God's shadow, His Spirit is mine. I'm in the way of, of God's only Son. Died for me. 
sang that song, I was reading from the 8th chapter of Romans. In the 5th chapter of Romans, it tells us how the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. And by the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts, I think it means giving us a love for God as much as Him loving us. It's shed abroad in our hearts, it says in Romans 5, 5, by the Holy Ghost, which He has given us. It's a good thought to remember. I want you to meet today two people into whose heart I know the love of God has been shed because they've got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Brother Joe Murray and his wife Myrtle, my uncle and aunt. Glad to have you all on the program today. I feel right at home. <laughs> Amen. <Glad> I do too. <laughs> we, we, are, <laughs> we are in your home. I, yeah. I, 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 I excuse you. All that. together, yeah. yeah. I remember, do you remember the, the Sunday morning I wrote that song? Yeah, I was thinking about it a few minutes ago. Barbara come on in there and said, it's time to eat. John said, I can't go right now. I'm, I'm going to write a song. He sat there and read that whole song and then we ate. <laughs> <laughs> that song came first. It was on we, Sunday morning. Yeah, we had spent the night at your house, I think. That's right. I was thinking about Getting it. Getting ready to go to our Sunday services. And we're going to be having some Sunday services shortly after this program. If you're hearing at 10 o'clock this Sunday morning, we'll be having ours uh, beginning at 11 o'clock at my home, 230 Shabazz Avenue. Welcome. Aunt Myrtle, we haven't had your testimony on the program. I wanted you first, though, because I've never, I've never really uh, heard exactly where in the state of Tennessee you're from. What, now, if I was going to start at Knoxville, which direction would I go to the place where you're from originally? We'll in start Tennessee. from Nashville. Better start in Nashville. Nashville okay. South of Nashville. So if I was going to start in Knoxville, I'd go west to, to Nashville. Nashville and then go south. Right. What's the name of the place? Well, you know, did it have a name? It was way back up in the hills. Uh, I guess. It was uh, Brace is where I first heard of the Holy Ghost. Brace. How'd Brace, you, Tennessee. Brace, Tennessee. How did you first hear of the Holy well, Ghost baptism? Uh, some women came from Louisville, Kentucky that your, had received the Holy Ghost by your daddy's Revival. Yeah, my father went out to Louisville, Kentucky. Had a great revival out there in the 1930s, early or 40s, and well, what time? 30s. In the 30s. How old were you? I was uh, 14. 14 when you first heard of it. When you first heard of it, well, let me ask you this: Where did you first see it demonstrated? You know, we hear about the Spirit, but where did you first see right it? Right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Those that same was ladies. the first time that I ever saw the power of God on it. Human being. Well, what about your the rest of your family? Had they ever seen? No, it was absolutely new to everybody in the community. After they came, uh, people you would 
when we would go to school, we walked to school, we walked by people's homes and they'd be out on the porch with the Bible. They'd be searching the Bible because it's absolutely new. They'd say, well, it, it's just uh, it's just nothing to it. And then the people say, well, I'm going to get my Bible out and see. And you'd see them sitting out on the porch in the summertime, in the fall of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'd be reading and searching. And uh, people would come. Then you didn't have many cars, you know, but people would come from miles and miles away and come on wagons and a few people had cars and they would come and people from Nashville, Tennessee, 75 miles away were even came to the meeting. My goodness, you must have had some good meetings that the word spread around. Now every every time there's a, there's a, there's a new message uh, that God reveals something new to people, it's going to bring division. It's That's going to right. stir up things. Yes, yeah, it sure does. I want to talk a little bit about that, but first of all, I want to mention, you notice that she said that some people just said, well, there's nothing to it. Other people said, well, I'm going to look in the Bible and see if there's something to it. Did you know that that happened when Paul, the apostle, carried the gospel around to Asia Minor and over into Macedonia and even down into Greece? That, let's say in Macedonia, the people in, in Macedonia, Thessalonica, which was in Macedonia, they rejected Paul's message, many of them, some few believed, but then Paul went down to a place called Berea, and it says in the scriptures, in the book of Acts, that those, that those people that Paul met at Berea were nobler than the ones in Thessalonica because of one reason. They didn't just say, oh, there's nothing to it. They searched the scriptures daily to see whether the things Paul was saying were true. Yeah, that's right. And if this is a new message to you, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, the power of the Spirit, and healing, and miracles, if that's new to you, be noble about it. You don't have to jump right up and say yes, you don't have to jump right up and say no, if, if you're inclined to, to neither way. Look right here in the Bible and see whether these things be true. If it's true, thank God that more light has come. And I think that you will. If you search in here, you'll see that it's true. But as I said, when the truth comes, it's going to divide, it's going to separate the wise and the foolish. And I imagine there are some happy stories and sad stories in that revival. I, I, don't, think, I don't think I've ever sat down and just talked with you about just exactly how those things happen. Well, um, before they came, I, I had a dream that uh, the Lord was coming and I wasn't ready to go. And uh, so, when well, did you, you had your mind on the Lord? See, even before see that? when I was eight years old, we were in a Presbyterian uh, organization, uh -huh. and uh, my daddy came to me and uh, during a revival meeting, wanted me to go up and get what they call saved. You know, well, when I went, I I got burdened, and that burden never did leave me until I received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how to talk to anybody about it because you'd never heard about it. That, no, I didn't know. I just knew that I wasn't satisfied. I just knew I had a burden, and I knew that uh, some of the people that went for that experience seemed to be feeling a little bit better, but I didn't. And uh, so I drifted on like that. And then when they came, though, I was reminded uh, that that was what I wanted. When I saw them stand up and the power of God on them and, and the tears run down their cheeks and all. I knew that I had something touched me, touched inside Amen. me, and I knew that was what I wanted. Amen. But I still drifted on, went to school, and hear them criticize it there, and some of them praise it, and and then to hear my mother and daddy speak of it, and my mother said she knew the Lord had power to save instantly. They said, well, what did they talk? What did they preach? What did they tell you last night? And I said, well, they said that if there's nobody saved now. They wouldn't be saved. Wouldn't be saved till endured to the end. Well, Jesus said, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Obviously, that's the scripture they were using. Yeah, there. so my mother so your, said... Your mother and father were investigating, were letting you go to the service and then asking you about what was going on. Well, one of them would go with us one night and oh. one the other, and then they'd ask questions, which everyone didn't go. Uh -huh. So my mother said, well, I know that's not true. The Lord's got power to save instant. <laughs> I thought, well, there you go again. But I drifted on and drifted on, and, and I... I, I feel like I was the first one to realize it was the power of God, and it seemed like I was about the last one to receive it. To receive it. <laughs> but I, how long before you first saw and you first started going to the services these ladies were having? 
So when you were when you were baptized with the Spirit? Oh, it was several months. Several months. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not as long as some people take to make up their mind and really lay it all on the altar. Well, I I felt like that uh, that if I didn't go ahead and get it, I was going to die, and mm -hmm. and I just felt like I had I just had put it off long enough. I just felt like I had to had to. Where make were you when you received it? I was uh, uh well the uh, I was in Brace, Tennessee, and. Uh, I got a great experience, and, and I thought I had the Holy Ghost. Well, the next morning, my daddy said, Did you know what you were saying last night when you are speaking in tongues? And I, I said, No, I didn't know what I was saying. He said, Well, he said, I want you to, to to go through and learn what it's all about. I want you to go, uh, you know, just... In other words, he thought I had to interpret it to, to, for it to be real. <laughs> so I got under a doubt, and I... Uh, I know, it can happen. I got under a doubt, and it, it just it just grouped me. It just... Mm -hmm. just and uh, then that lasted after they went on back, even at times that would hit me again, you know. And the Spirit not speaking through me again, I was, I was just confused. And uh, so then when the ladies came back, they were went to uh, Salem, Tennessee, which is called Possum Trot <laughs> at times. Well, there was a lady there that was in the Presbyterian organization with mm -hmm. us. But she was always she was always happy, and she would get up and have a revival meeting. She'd just get up and shout all over the place. But when they began to preach the Holy Ghost to her, you know, when they came with that, she was a little bit slow. She thought she had enough. Well, when they were talking to her about that, I started to tell her how real it was, something about it. But instead of that, the Spirit took over and said something, and I never did say anything to her in my language. In a heavenly language. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Well, yes. That's the best witness. I, you know, Sister Manning lives down the country. She had a, a person come knock on her door from a certain uh, sect or denomination or whatever, and they sat down at the table and wanted to explain to her how that the gifts of the Spirit and such as that and the speaking in tongues was a thing of the past. And you know, dear old Sister Manning, she's not one that's going to just quarrel with anybody. She didn't know what to say. And she looked up and said, Lord, what? And here came the Holy Ghost all over her. She started speaking in tongues. and. Uh, and when the Spirit uh, stopped uh, speaking through her, she, she didn't know what else to say, and neither did the other person, and she got up and left. <laughs> I guess that was enough said. We got the testimony. As, as one, as one uh, television commentary said, it's an experience on the one hand, yeah. experience that some people have received from God versus a doctrinal argument on the other. That's right. And when God does it, it's not evil. And if Jesus suffered and died on the cross in order to make it available to us, you know it can't be from the wrong source. Can't be. Can't be. Then, them going back, and we didn't have any place to go see the different ones received it. Some of them live in one direction, some another, you know. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't get together and pray like people do now, you know. And I had, we had to go on to our Sunday school there where they didn't have believe in the power of God. And... Uh, I got so burdened. I just wanted. I just wanted to feel the presence of God real good again. And Brother Frank came down. Brother and Frank he, Griffin. Brother Frank Griffin, and he was uh, talking a lot about fasting and praying. Said if anybody couldn't get close enough that they wanted to with God to, to fast and pray, and uh, I started fasting a little bit, just mm -hmm. a day or two at a time, and uh, we walked with him over to meeting uh, to some community home, you know. And I was up testifying, and uh, and the spirit broke loose real freely, and I, and I started dancing and speaking in tongues all at the same time. That was a glorious. Amen. <laughs> that was that was the best breakthrough that I that he, I had. It's good to be free in the Lord. David, King David, danced with all his might before the Lord, and he had a wife that despised him for it. Yeah. It said that Michael despised David in her in her heart. And when King David came in from rejoicing, he was so full of joy and happiness. And she said, yeah, you look pretty silly out there today, King, dancing like that in front of all these vain women. It made David quite angry, and she suffered for it the rest of her life. When the power of God falls and we, 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 we dance in the Spirit and rejoice in the Spirit, we're like children again, Praise free from God. malice. And, and Jesus Praise. said, be like children. Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, how long was it after that 
that you moved away from Brace. I know you. I, I know that you went up to Louisville, Kentucky, sometime. Didn't you move up there? I think it was about three. I believe it's about three years. Well, how did you get it down to North Carolina? I'm a great on but Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any particular reason you come? Well, uh, the people, some people out there in Kentucky were talking about coming, and they uh, they passed a, passed it up, and I decided I would come, and. Uh, then after I came, I decided I would stay. <laughs> I'm glad you did. When was the first time you ever... I met her here the first time I ever saw her. She was coming down to a meeting out in the country, down at Rock and Cross, on the bus with your daddy, and uh -huh. that was the first time I ever saw her. I was home from the Army on a on three-day uh, three pass, weekend pass, and I happened to be down. I came up there with another fellow to pick him up when, when they got off the bus. What were you doing down down here? Picking cotton, or didn't you work in the uh, cotton mills here? Yes, I worked in the cotton mills uh, oh, several years. Several years down yeah. here in Henderson. Yes, in, in the South Henderson. South Henderson mill. Harriet Cotton Mills. Yeah. Well, tell me something now about your family. You know, we had that revival down in Brace, Tennessee, was it? That's right. Did any other members of your family receive the Spirit? Uh, my brother, my youngest brother. What's his Junior. Name? Junior? Yeah, he, he received the Holy Ghost. I know you have an a older brother, Billy. Yes. He has a good understanding of these things, and, and I enjoy listening, hearing from him through the mail. He lives down in Arkansas. Now, what about you? Anybody else in your family receive it? Uh, my sister Bessie received it after she went to Louisville. Uh, where does she live now? She lives in uh, uh, Live Oak, Florida. Live Oak, Florida. Well, what, what about your mother or your father? Uh, well, my my daddy started out seeking it, but I don't know whether he ever got satisfied or not. He uh, he got a little hung up when he found out they didn't believe in the sacrament, you know. Uh -huh. But when you walk in the Spirit, there's no need to continue to try to worship God in the flesh. That's right. Such as... Uh, in the New Testament, in New Testament books, the big controversy was whether you ought to circumcise in the flesh. And Paul said, uh, after he got to preaching and the revelations of God began to come, Paul said, no, we only need one circumcision. And that is in our hearts by the Spirit. We don't need the circumcision in the flesh anymore to be a Jew. But we still need to be circumcised. Yes. But only in the Spirit. Also, Paul taught that there's only one baptism. Right. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And Paul taught that we can trust Jesus so much that we, we can put all our trust in the baptism that he gives. Right, amen. Just as he taught the Jews or Gentiles of his day that they could trust Jesus so much that when he circumcised their heart, that's all the circumcision Absolutely they Absolutely enough, yes. And when he clothes us with the robes of righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost, we don't need costumes for worship anymore. We don't need robes to show that we're holy or that we're separated to God or any other reason. And he also taught this. There's not but one body. One body, one church, yes. By one spirit are we all baptized into one body. You cannot join the church. You can't do it. That's right. I know it's become a popular thing and it's just taken for granted now nowadays. But if you are a member of a church that you have joined, you're not that that you did not join the church that Jesus is coming back for because you can't join it. There's not but one way to get into the church that Jesus is coming back for, and how is that? By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Every time Paul actually mentions the words getting into the body of Christ or into the body of Christ. And telling how it's done, it's always baptism. Whether it's Romans the 6th chapter, or Galatians the 3rd chapter, or 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter, it's, we're baptized into Jesus Christ. Not with water, but Jesus Himself baptizes us into His body. Into His body. And you were baptized into the body when you were, how old? 14? 14. You got off at a good age. My mother was baptized when she was 14. We have some uh, children... That, come to our services now, and they're about that age. Last last week, for those of you who saw the program that we had last week, we saw uh, uh, Kathy Bartow, and I think she's about 14 now, getting close to it, and uh, she was baptized with the Holy Ghost in our services one 
uh, night at my house. And so when we walk in the Spirit, we have no need to continue in the religious ordinances of the flesh, either fleshly baptism, fleshly circumcision, or uh, joining something that, the, that you can just put yourself into. We can't put ourselves into the body of Christ. No, no man can take us in. It, uh, the, the book on which our names are that really matters is the book that God has. Amen. That's, that's really what he's going to go by. He's not going to go by any list down here. I don't not at think. All. I think he's going to go by the list that he's made. Amen. And he's written it in there with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And Myrna, I'm so happy that you were here and gave your testimony a little bit about it. I hope that it will encourage others. If you don't have already a tradition in your family of being baptized with the Holy Ghost, if your grandparents didn't know about it, or your mother and father didn't know about it, it's a good time for you to start your own tradition Amen. so that your grandchildren can say, well, grand, Grandpa, Grandma, they really had what it takes. They really had the Spirit of God. If it's not already a tradition built up in your family, why don't you start one so that others will, that you love and that love you will be encouraged to go the way that Jesus died for. I, I want to thank these two good people who were here with us on the program today, my Uncle Joe Murray and my Aunt Myrtle Murray. I, I love you. you. You meant a great deal to me in the Lord. Thank Amen. you for coming. Well, you mean I'll, a lot to us too, John. Amen. Well, I, always feel, I always feel right at home when I come in here because I am at home Amen. almost as much as you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. God bless you. And join me next week on the Pentecost Experience. Now some believe they had received new wine so soon that morning. But Peter said, the Lord has shed this blessing for your warning. Now when they heard the apostles' word, their hearts were pricked within. What shall we do? We're asking you, they cried to hear from him. It was the Pentecost experience sent down for you and me. Sent down in love from God above to set all people free. Repent, he advised, and be baptized, everyone in Jesus' name. The Spirit then will come within and cancel all your shame. They gladly heard the apostles' word with fear on every soul. They found a way that very day, 3,000 souls or more. It was the Pentecost experience, sent down for you and me. Sent down in love from God above to set all people free. This blessing would, if understood, be pouring out today. It's only doubt that keeps it out, so why not stop and pray? Never shun the unknown tongue, for it is God's expression through everyone when the Spirit comes and takes up His possession. It was the Pentecost experience sent down for you and me, sent down in love from God above.